Science fiction loves time travel. So many stories can be told. But suppose time travel were real. Whom would I meet? What would I do? Would I try to kill Hitler as a baby? Change history and save millions of lives? Would I help my grandmother when as a child she suffered in Europe? But what about those famous paradoxes? Suppose a time traveler would kill his grandmother before she conceived his mother. No mother, no him. But then, how could he have gone back in time in the first place? Some scientists take time travel seriously. Not to make machines, but to explore the nature and limits of reality. Is time travel possible? I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn, and Closer to Truth is my journey to find out. Time travel seems impossible. So I begin in New York with the author of Physics of the Impossible, a professor at the City University of New York, Michio Kaku. He likes pushing boundaries. Let's start with Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton believed that time was like an arrow. Once you fired it, it went in a straight direction. One second on the Earth was one second on Mars, was one second on Jupiter. It never reversed directions. Along comes Einstein, who says, not so fast, not so fast. Time is like a river, old man river, that meanders around stars, speeds up, and slows down. The new wrinkle in all this, which is causing all the excitement and the dismay of philosophers, is that this river of time can fork into two rivers. Or perhaps the river of time can have whirlpools and time can go in on itself. In that case, time travel is something you have to take very seriously. Because Einstein's equations do allow for time travel. And they're blueprints. <laughs> blueprints for different kinds of, of time travel designs that are compatible with Einstein's theory. For example, gigantic spinning cylinders. You go around the cylinder and you come back before you left. Colliding cosmic strings. You wind around these cosmic strings and you come back before you left. And the key element is that in Einstein's theory, it, it allows this under certain solutions? That's right. Time and space are like a fabric, mm -hmm. uh, like rubber, like a trampoline net. However, if you stretch the trampoline net so much, it can rip, perhaps. And perhaps you can turn this trampoline net into a pretzel and allow yourself to go backwards in time. Now, of course, there's a catch. There's always a catch in these things. The energy, the gasoline necessary to do this is fabulous. Even an atomic bomb mm. does not have enough energy to drive a time machine. For a time machine, you need the energy of an exploding star. How about all the logical paradoxes that one would come across in time travel, going back to the past, killing your grandmother, and all of those kinds of uh, issues? Or meeting your teenage mother when she's a teenager and she falls in love with you. So how can you be born if your teenage mother just fell in love with you? Yeah. There are two ways to resolve these paradoxes. Uh, the first is self-consistency, that if you want to shoot your parents before you're born, there's something preventing you from pulling that trigger. Maybe there's a hidden law of physics that says you cannot create a time paradox. I don't believe that. Yeah, that seems so far out. That's far out. I believe that the river of time forks into two rivers. If you saw Back to the Future Part Two very carefully, Doc Brown, this Einstein figure, goes to the blackboard and draws a timeline from the 50s to the 80s. And then he draws a separate line that splits off from the main timeline. 
the river of time forks into two rivers. Is this uh, getting to the so-called many world interpretation of quantum mechanics? Would, would that be? That is the simplest way to resolve all these paradoxes. That never seemed very simple to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the simplest in the sense that you don't have to add any other assumptions uh -huh. Uh -huh. other sure. than quantum sure. mechanics. Sure. So if you go backwards in time and save Abraham Lincoln from being assassinated in, in the Ford's theater, you've saved somebody else's Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. who's genetically equivalent to your Abraham Lincoln, but you've entered another universe. If you shoot your parents before you're born, you've shot somebody else's parents before you're born who's genetically equivalent to your parents. So you can go backwards in time continually, monkey with your own past. Uh -huh. However, you're monkeying with, in some sense, a parallel past. Right. Now, Stephen Maybe Hawking, creating a, a, a parallel past. Creating a, a whole new, new, new universe. universe. That's right. And Stephen Hawking even said, there's got to be a laws of physics preventing this thing from happening. Mm -hmm. Well, we've tried and tried and tried and failed. We cannot find any law of physics preventing you from going backwards in time. It seems to be consistent with the known laws of physics. The trick is you have to have this energy on the scale of a star. You'd have to be a very advanced civilization. So these tourists from the future are just not 100 years into the future. These tourists from the future would be perhaps millions of years in the future, the ability to control the output of a star. We physicists are hot rodders of physics. We push the equations until they break down. So Stephen Hawking assumed that they would break down. Well, we were shocked. They didn't break down. The laws of physics seem to be compatible with time machines. This is very unsettling because it means that perhaps, just perhaps, time travel is possible for advanced civilizations. Cannot be ruled out. So the key for time travel is Einstein's theory of special relativity, which seems easy to describe, but hard to believe. I need more Einstein. So I go to Princeton to meet J. Richard Gott, professor of astrophysics who likes to explain how time travel might work. Richard, how can we begin to look at the physics of time travel? Well, in his theory of special relativity in 1905, Einstein showed that time travel to the future is possible. He showed that moving clocks tick slowly. So if you want to visit the Earth in the year 3000, all you need is a fast spaceship. Yeah. So you just go at 99.995% the speed of light out to a star 500 light years away, turn around and come back at the same speed. And when you get back, the Earth will be in the year 3000, 1,000 years later, but you will have only aged 10 years. So this is how you can visit the future. And indeed, our greatest time traveler so far is Sergei Krikalov, who has traveled 1 48th of a second <laughs> to the future by or his m numerous orbital missions around the Earth. Now, obviously, this has to be enormously faster, a very, very high fraction of the speed of light, but we accelerate particles to That's that right. speed today in we our... Have, we have protons going this fast. It's just a matter of money <laughs> and engineering. <laughs> NASA, take note. <laughs> it's expensive, but possible in principle, we know for sure. Okay. Now, what about time travel to the past? That sounds much more complicated. That sounds more difficult. Um, there's a poem. There was a young lady named Bright. She traveled far faster than light. She left one day in a relative way, but returned, returned the, the previous, previous night. night. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could go faster than the speed of light from special relativity, we know that theoretically you could go back in time. However, Einstein showed that you couldn't build a rocket that would go faster than the speed of light. You could build one that would go very close to the speed of light, but not faster. But in 1915, his theory of general relativity showed that there was curved space-time. Mm -hmm. This explained gravity. And in curved space-time, you can have a shortcut where you can beat a light beam to a destination. And this opens the door to having time travel to the past. So what's occurring here is that if this is space-time, and this is time going this way, space this way, 
your, your path through time like this, this is your world line, yes. your path through time, you're going toward the future always. Mm -hmm. But what can happen here is that the space time is sufficiently twisted so that you, while going toward the future all the time, yet circle back and visit an event in your own past. And so the time traveler, circling the cosmic strings is going toward the future, toward the future, toward the future, but yet comes back and visits an event. And this would be caused past. by the curvature of space time. Yes. And how far back can you go, theoretically? Think spaghetti and spaghetti-os. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you're not lucky enough to find two cosmic, infinite cosmic strings passing each other at the right speed, you can always take a loop of cosmic string that you find manipulate it by flying massive spaceships around it, so you cause it to contract by a large factor, and the sides of the strings will pass each other uh -huh. at a speed fast enough to make a time machine, Close, slower than the speed of light, but still fast enough to make a time machine. And then I showed that this would be sufficiently compact that the time travel region would be likely hidden inside a black hole. If you were lucky, you could do the time travel inside the black hole, but you're never getting back out to brag to your friends and about it. And never telling anybody about it. So the laws of physics as we understand them today seem to allow time travel solutions. And the question we're asking ourselves is, will we discover new laws of physics in the future that'll somehow stop it? So we're, we're probing the boundaries of the laws of physics under extreme situations, mm -hmm. which may give us clues as to how they work. Time travel is theoretically possible, but practically not likely. Still worth the effort, surely, diving deeply into the ocean of reality. Time travel is all about the flexing and twisting of space and time. It's called warping which includes wormholes, those theoretical tunnels that connect one part of the universe to another. No one is more knowledgeable about the warping of space-time than Kip Thorne, the Feynman Professor of Theoretical Physics at Caltech. We meet in Kip's lab, a prototype gravity wave detector. Kip. I'm interested in, in the use of time travel, wormholes theoretically, to probe the nature of reality. We would like to probe the laws of physics through a combination of experiment and theory. But there are areas where the experiment is so challenging we can't do it with the human technology in this century. And wormholes and some aspects of the nature of space are in that domain, predictions about them. And so thought experiments Einstein taught us are a powerful tool for probing the nature of physics. You just ask, could in principle, in our infinitely advanced civilization, could such a civilization build a wormhole to travel from here to another galaxy? And when you ask that kind of a question, you then go into the laws of physics and you probe it mathematically, geometrically in the laws of physics, and it teaches you a lot about the nature of space and time. How might that work uh, conceptually from the laws of physics? The, the warping of space in a wormhole uh, is so intense, it's, it's like the warping of space in a stretched uh, rubber mem membrane. Uh, it wants to shrink, and the wormhole wants to shrink and pinch off, so you, when you try to travel through, you die. and so. Can, can they be held open? How do you hold them open? And so we then, in this way, discovered intimate relationship between the nature of energy and tensions on one hand and uh, the nature of warping of space on another hand. Now, how does that relate to time and the possibility of time travel in either direction, to the future or to the past? If you have wormholes, then if you move the mouth of one wormhole uh, down near the surface of a black hole, time flows very slowly there compared to the rate of flow of time back here on Earth. Uh, and so uh, the two mouths get out of sync. The mouth of the wormhole sits down near the surface of the black hole and it sits there 
uh, with only a few hours passing, while up here on Earth a billion years pass. And so we on Earth can then go down through the wormhole and can come out near the surface of the black hole a billion years earlier. We can then come out and go back up in the, the external universe a billion years earlier than we went down. So if you have wormholes, there's a natural way to make a time machine. So this was wonderful when, when uh, my students and I discovered this. I was very excited. Uh, but then probing more deeply and talking with uh, other colleagues, uh, uh, I was forced to realize that there's a universal mechanism that when you're trying to turn a wormhole into a time machine in this way, a universal mechanism that always creates a violent explosion that very likely destroys the wormhole right at the moment when it begins to, uh, to make time travel possible. And so time machines, if you try to create them, appear to self-destruct. We simply do not have the understanding of the laws of physics to be able to speculate about that quantitatively yet. We have to have a much deeper understanding of quantum gravity to get the answer, whether that's possible. Warping, wormholes, exotic stuff. Time travel involves the most mysterious matter in the universe. But is there anything about time travel beyond science? Fred Allen Wolf, a physicist by training, sees far out meaning in quantum theory. His views are controversial, appealing more to mystics than to scientists. Fred is undeterred. Fred, from your work in quantum mechanics, uh, is there any real possibility to time travel, wormholes, and all that exotic stuff? Well, uh, it's always possible to time travel if you can find a wormhole and if you can find some exotic matter which has negative pressure which will keep the darn thing open long enough for you to slip through. Yes, of course. I believe that the mind, that the mind, the subspace-time realm out of which I believe matter comes into being according to my understanding of quantum physics, that that realm is a spaceless, timeless realm which means that it's like, in a sense, a place where closed time-like paths can emerge. So it seems to me that the mind itself has something in its nature which is time travel -y. I don't know how to quite find the language to, to describe it. What I think is going on is that the mind is constructing our temporal experience. We have an objective sense of time, certainly. The sun rises, the sun sets. We all agree about that. We have an idea of what that means. But subjective time, which is very much like objective time, but is it really? No, it's not. Uh, if you're on a hot date, <laughs> I mean, one hour can feel like five minutes. It ain't enough time. Right, right. And if you're on a horrible date, uh, <laughs> one minute can feel like five hours. I mean, so there's a relativity. There's a, a, a about time. Now, there there's, are good psychological reasons why that occurs in our normal life. But can you infer from that that there is a a, a time dimension to a deeper consciousness that has, I, that has a different reality? I think so. I believe that every time there's a conscious experience, we're creating a sequence so that the next conscious experience and the one following it for a personal conscious experience, that that sequence implies what I would call normal time order if it goes from more probable to less probable. But if it goes from less probable to more probable, it's actually going backwards in time. I can't, I can't prove this, but in my speculative thinking, this is what we do when we practice, for example, yoga, or when we learn something new, or when we forget something. In order to do something new, we have to use this process of going backwards and forwards in time not, sub, not objective time. I'm not talking about changing the world time. I'm talking about the internal clock, your subjective time sense, that that's where this is. But that, that's an internal psychological process. I'm ah. talking about is there a deeper 
uh, reality as you see consciousness being more fundamental that can uh, access objective time in different ways? Well, objective time is a time that we agree as objective time. Relativity theory tells us that it's not absolute, right. for one thing. Right. Which objective time am I trying to get to, so to speak? There is no such thing. I think the thing to do is to look at the fundamental way in which we construct time, that sequences can be ordered. Why should we try to worry about changing objective time? Because objective time for us is only our point of view. I agree that, according to Einstein, objective time does not exist. But does that mean that human subjective time is a meaningful description of the reality of time? Wouldn't that suppose a central role for consciousness in the cosmos? I need to get back to hardcore physics. Seth Lloyd believes that the universe, fundamentally, is a computer, and that reality, fundamentally, is information. Does this help with time travel? Seth is professor of mechanical engineering at MIT. We meet in his quantum computing lab. Seth, how do you look at the possibility of time travel and these strange ways of skipping through space? Well, we're traveling through time right now. We just happen okay. to be traveling forward through time, and nobody seems to think this is remarkable. But it strikes me as already rather remarkable <laughs> that we're traveling forward through time, right? And in fact, there are very specific models in which time travel, or going backwards in time, can in fact happen um, uh, based on ideas from quantum information theory. There's a famous problem about black holes, which is a black hole, you know, something that's so massive that light itself can't right, escape. Sure. So anything that goes in can't come out. They're the roach motels of the <laughs> cosmos. Right. Yeah. Bits check in, but they don't check out. But yet at the same time, um, they can evaporate. So Hawking taught us that black holes are radiating. A big black hole radiates very, very slowly, but it, nonetheless, there's radiation coming out. The radiation looks completely random. And Hawking thought that all the information about what had gone into the black hole was completely destroyed. Two physicists, Gary Horowitz and Juan Maldacena, came up with an alternative suggestion um, for how black holes might evaporate. And in their model, it's quite possible for information to go into the black hole, the black hole evaporates, and then the information escapes. So what's the implication of that? It means in order to, to get, have information escape from a black hole, that's equivalent to being able to go backwards in time. If, you're going, if you can go faster than the speed of light, effectively faster than the speed of light, then you can travel backward in time. Right. This is the problem with going faster right, than right. the speed of light. It gives rise to all sorts of paradoxes. So the relationship to time travel is black hole evaporation and time travel are intimately related to each other. So <clears throat> that's one thing. That's the first part. Now, the other implication, of course, which is dear to my heart, is it means you could use black holes as some kind of computers, right? Because you send this information in, something horrible happens to it in the singularity in the center of the black hole, but radiation comes out, and actually, what is this radiation but the information that went in in processed form? So the black hole is effectively computing. So as you look at this total picture of all these weird ideas of time travel, wormholes, quantum teleportation, do you think there's some practical implication of this uh, in the future? Well, you know, when I was in, uh, a graduate student at Cambridge, I, my grandmother, who was 90 years old, came over to visit, and she said, so, Seth, what are you working on? Could it have any implications? And I said, well, maybe the only implication would be building a time machine. And she said, better hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I, I'll, I think that uh, if your time machine involves untested speculative theories, and the way to travel backwards in time is first you have to jump into this black <laughs> hole. Well, I think we may take a while before we find takers. Certainly I wouldn't be the first one to do it, even if it were my own theory and I believed in it implicitly.
time and its passage feel to be absolute and unchanging. The most basic part of our world, the stage on which the play of existence is presented. The feeling is deceiving, and time travel explains why. As Einstein showed, time is unified with space, and time is relative. There is no absolute standard of time, and all points in time somehow coexist. Although time can seem to run in either direction, forward or backward, other factors must prevent kill your grandmother paradoxes. Not even God could make something that did exist never exist. In considering existence, it's time to get closer to truth. For complete interviews and for further information, please visit closertotruth.com.